What's up, everybody? It's Chris Stefano, aka Chris Reed Stefano, and this is Chris Reed. Today we got a good one. We are going back to August 27th, 1776, one day after my birthday, and we are going into Brooklyn, my hometown, to do the Battle of Brooklyn. The first time Brooklyn was invaded. A lot of people think it was the Chinese, but it wasn't. It's the British. I'm going to tell you what happened. We know the story, okay? British settlers, you know, coming to town to the New World for religious freedom. You know, they wanted, they needed to trade, they needed to, you know, go home, you know, send money back to the home country, show they were making money, blah, blah, blah. So King James, the first of England, establishes the colonies in America, the best 13 colonies anywhere in the world ever. And by the 1700s, most of them were formed. They were called the 13 British colonies. It wasn't the United States yet. There were 13 colonies, 13 very, very cute colonies, my favorite one being New York. And we are about to start to get into a fight with the British and these red coat motherfuckers in August of 1776 are going to try to invade Brooklyn and spoiler alert, they beat the shit out of us. All right, so remember, you guys know me, I'm Colonial Chrissy D. I love the Colonial Times and I know a lot of the fans who listen to these shows know a lot about Colonial Times too, but for the people that don't, for the people that just got here, for my new fans who have come over from Bud Light and Nike, if you don't know, people living in the 13 colonies at this time in 1776 considered themselves to be British, but also British American, okay? Because what happened was, is when, you know, all this drama was happening, you know, about, you know, 20 years before the American Revolutionary War, you had the French and Indian War, where France fought Britain and also some Native Americans. I don't know why they just call it the French and British War. They had to be the French and Indian War. I have no idea. But that's why they call it, the, you know, they, they, it was really, when you see French and Indian War, just know it's really French versus the British. But the British didn't want their name in it, so they just put in Indian, which is a slur. A fun fact about the French and Indian War is there was a 21-year-old hottie with a body, okay, who definitely, and who died of throat cancer, so I know at 21 was eating puss and ass left and right. That's the only way he died of throat cancer. And you might have heard of him. He was an you know, unknown lieutenant colonel fighting for the British militia in his home colony of Virginia, his hometown of Virginia. No, it's not Kyle Rittenhouse. The answer is General George Washington. I love you, George. George Washington fought as a 21-year-old in the French and Indian War, a.k.a. the French and British War, in 1754 is when he was fighting. He protected the land, which is now known as Pittsburgh. He was collecting, you know, protecting Permanente's brothers and, you know, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Lady Gaga's hometown, where Batman was filmed. He was protecting all that. George Washington did that for you. So you could see, you could see throat cancer, Christian Bale's voice in Batman in that Pittsburgh movie. Now, he didn't know at the time, but George was gaining experience, okay? He was gaining experience and there it is right now the police we by the way we shoot this thing live from new york city so if somebody's gonna die during christries they're gonna die during christries and i don't know if they're dead but on christries we take a stance and i'm gonna say they're fucking dead so george washington he didn't know that he was gaining experience because one day he was going to go on to lead the continental army in the revolutionary war against the british to fight the battle of brooklyn and defend against these red-coated pigs so what happens British won the French and Indian War. Yes, 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 yes. George, you know, George Washington essentially won because he fought for the British. Yes, George Washington's eating ass, having fun. Great. But when you win a war, understand what wars cost. Money. More, war costs Yeezys. So Britain was in great debt. They were in debt. They borrowed so much money. So King George III had no choice but to raise taxes. He just had to raise taxes just like former President Donald Trump had no choice but to try and build that wall. It's, we're just doing what we got to do here. No, I'm kidding. He didn't build the wall, and I'm happy he did it. Let the trans in. Taxes, raising taxes, it doesn't matter because a lot of people were like, yo, I didn't fucking, I don't care about fighting the British Indians. You know, I didn't care about fighting the French, I mean. I don't care at all. Why do, 
you're going to raise taxes on me? I'm just a blacksmith. I'm just a blacksmith. I'm just a prostitute. I'm just whatever. I'm just a prostitute blacksmith. So I don't want to have to pay more taxes, but King George III said, well, you're gonna, I'm going to raise him and you're going to pay him, okay? You're going to pay him because I got little boys to fuck. I'm a king. So more taxes, higher taxes meant what? More pissed off British Americans. And then that's what, why we started the war. You know, it all led to one conflict after another, Battle of Lexington, uh, you know, in, in, in Concord, New Hampshire, April 19, 1775, the you know, shot heard around the world when um, British troops were sent to seize colonial military supply stores in Concord, New Hampshire. And then that's where it all, uh, that's where it all, uh, sorry, Concord, Massachusetts. I said Concord, New Hampshire twice. It's Concord, Massachusetts. But Concord is the capital of New Hampshire, so fuck everybody. Um, you know, basically the war begins that, the, you know, the, the, uh, our army, uh, you know, where, where got the, the British army comes to mainland to 13 colonies, shot heard around the world. Battles, battles, battles. They tried to, and by the way, the British soldiers tried to invade Boston, and they, ne they you know, when Boston beat them the fuck back. New York, the issue was, in August 27, 1776, the Battle of Brooklyn, is the, pro the problema was, is, you know, listen, we're New Yorkers. We didn't think, we don't think anybody's going to fuck with us ever. And um, we didn't really have all the entrances to New York um, blocked. So there was like a lot of ways because there was, you know, we don't want to, you know, here in New York, we don't want to upset people's rights. We do not want to step on their land. We do not want to go onto the Native Americans' land and take that if that was not ours. So we didn't protect all the entrances um, into Brooklyn. And the British, those sneaky red-coated fucks, came with the Hessians across on our Brooklyn shores. And listen, I tried. I was throwing pizza at them. I was offering up Puerto Ricans. Nobody... The British didn't want to stop. The British and these Hessian German soldiers, the sex-crazed, blood-crazed lunatics, they didn't want to stop, and they just came in, and they started invading us, and things get really bad. So who's going to lead our troops in the Battle of Brooklyn? You guessed it, George Washington, my fucking boy. I wish it was Chaz Palminteri. Chaz Palminteri playing George Washington's the oh. movie I need to see. If Chaz Palminteri plays George Washington, I'm playing Martha. Because, listen, George Washington was a great general, okay? You know, Siege of Boston, he was there. The Battle of Trenton, which we won, he was there. He was in a lot of key victories. The Battle of Brooklyn was not one of them. What's going on, you know? We signed the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. You know, uh, uh, we actually, but we didn't, though. You know, a lot of people think we signed it. By the way, a lot of people think we signed the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. We didn't. We signed it August 2nd, 1776, one day after my father's birthday. I was born on... My father was born on August 1st, and I was born on August 26th, 1776, the both of us. So what's going on? The colonists, they're, you know, people, are, actually they're divided. A lot of people think it was just all the 13 colonies against Britain, but it wasn't like that. You had a lot of people who were loyalists. They were loyal to the British crown because at that time, you know, that the, the crown was literally the hand that was feeding them. You know, they, they had some pride for fighting and winning the French and Indian War. They didn't see what the big deal was. So they were like, why? I don't want to... I, I, I F with the Redcoats. And then the Patriots, the Patriots stormed those stairs on January 6th and did what they felt was right. Sorry, different Patriots. The Patriots, the Patriots, um, they, the, pa the Patriots rejected British rule. So some the loyalists accepted it. The Patriots rejected British rule. And they were the ones who were making up most of George Washington's army. So you had, you had real, just patriots, baby, just dirty Mel Gibson patriots. What a good movie. Um, I love you that the movie uh, Br Mel Gibson's son was played by Heath Ledger, an actor who's from Australia who would have sided with the British. Well, who's dead now? So I don't know what side he's on. He's on God's side. Or maybe he's in hell. You never know if he was on the Epstein's list. Here, let's set the stages. Okay, I want to set the stages. Like, who, like, you know, who is it? Who is it? Is it, you know, like, like, um, like, you know, like a, a big prize fight? Who is it? Is it, you know, Trump versus Biden? Greta Thunberg versus the environment? Me versus Puerto Rico? Who is it? Who's the fight? Well, we got the British Army commanded by General William Howe landed on Long Island, which is essentially Brooklyn, with 20,000 troops. I mean, 20,000 troops, literally, I mean... Could you imagine landing in Brooklyn now with 20,000 troops now? They'd be like, what, what apartment do you live in? What, this is, that's, that's the thing with war back then. Not a lot of people really fought. 
20,000 troops is nothing. That's not even a fucking protest. 20,000 troops ain't shit. And they started, these 20,000 troops in their red coats started walking towards Brooklyn. They started walking towards Brooklyn, and the people of Brooklyn at first saw them and were welcoming them in with open arms because those are Republican colors. But they realized very quickly, oh, these guys want to fight us. And Brooklyn, who's our army? We got the Continental Army. It is commanded by our boy, George Washington. George Washington is our general. And we only had 10,000 troops. So they had 20,000, and we only had 10,000. So that's, we had half of what they had if you're doing the math at home. And so we should have known then that we're going to lose and we're going to lose big. Okay. They have beautiful, shiny red coats. There's literally twice as many of them. They got these accents. They got the crazy Hessian soldiers, which is the German mercenary force that would just kill everybody like literal 1776 Nazis. And I'm like, we should go, but we're Americans and we we're Americans. We don't run. We shoot. And so we said, we're going to shoot back, okay? We're fucking incels. We're shooting back. So people are saying, why would they want to go? Why would they want to invade Brooklyn? It's all Russians and Chinese. And I'm like, we don't have a fight with them. And so local New York joke. If you don't know what, Google it. So thank you, Eric Adams. Why are they coming to New York? Okay, why are they coming to New York? You know, they're like, you know, I mean, you know, Governor Hochul, what, who are they coming to see? It's because when the British were finally forced out of Boston in, seven, in March of 1776, we, the Boston would not let them in. Boston kicked the shit out of them and they pushed them down the river. They pushed them down the river. And George Washington knew that they were going to eventually try to get back into Boston, but he said they're going to go, they're going to come down river. They're going to come down the Mystic River and they're going to come to one of the most strategic points in the Americas, New York City. As a matter of fact, the most strategic point where they could get into was through Staten Island. They were coming through my home borough of Staten Island, okay? Those dirty British fucks. They were coming through Staten Island. So, yeah, we, I, and we, we, were, you know, we were lighting the cannons up. We were shooting impractical jokers at them. Sure enough, in August of 1776, a fleet of British redcoats is coming down the Hudson River, I believe it was. I don't know what it was called back then. The Hudson River, and the Americans... You know, the, the uh, colonial soldiers, the patriots see them and they're like, shit, I didn't know their boats were that big because we don't have shit. We, the colonial army, we really don't have much. We got little bullshit muskets, pitch, pitchforks. Like we're not, we're not doing anything. We don't have, we don't have the, the entire French army fighting with us yet. So British uh, uh, fleet, uh, fleet week, it arrives off the coast of New York in, in July. All the girls running out there, guys, whoever. They set up camp in Staten Island across from New York. My family fed them. We didn't know who they were. We didn't know who the fuck they were. My family, well, we gave them pasta. We gave them adobo. Jerry tried to offer his services. And, and they were, because they were just people in red coats. They were very nice. And then the British sent men to negotiate with Washington. But you don't negotiate with terrorists. And that's what the British are. They're terrorists. Besides Matty Haley in the 1975. You're the good guys. DM me back or I kill myself. And they offered him, George Washington, a pardon from King George III if he just surrendered. Because make no mistake, George Washington is the leader, essentially, of the rebel army. So if they fight and lose, George Washington was going to get beheaded or hung. 1,000%. That's just what would happen to him. They would, everybody, Ben Franklin, they would hang them all. He says surrender. And George Washington says, no, we're not surrendering. Fuck you. I'm not surrendering. Okay. And then Washington, Washington responded to these British men that came to negotiate with Washington with a banger that might be my next tattoo. Those who have committed no fault want no pardon. Suck it, bitch. So on August 22nd, four days before my birthday, the British began landing troops and this, uh, this American attack, uh, this British attack was imminent. They, the Americans remained in their defensive positions, which was behind their mothers. And we're boys from Brooklyn. We say, Mom, fuck those guys. And we just waited for the British to attack as I go to sleep nightly waiting for. So the British, the, they get there in the early morning hours of August 27th. I just turned, it was my birthday the day after. They sent in a very small force. Just a small, you know, there was 20,000 soldiers. So a small, uh, if they're saying a small force, it was one guy. They sent a very small force 
to attack the center of the American defense. And while the Americans focused on this smaller attack, the main force, the, the real guys, the other 19,999 guys, were going to attack from the east and surround the colonial soldiers. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. George Washington, a lot of people will point to, well, he lost a lot of battles. He lost a lot, and that might be true. But the thing is with Washington is what all the people who lived with him at that time said, he knew when to retreat. He knew when to swallow his pride and retreat, and he knew when to save the army, okay? That's what he would do. So Washington knew that he's about to get that ass whooped because they've done fucked up and took the bait of the small troops when the big troops was coming around the east where nobody gives a shit on the east side and they were going to come right in and stick their bayonets up these colonial soldiers' assholes. And so Washington ordered his army to retreat in what is now Brooklyn Heights, the Brooklyn Heights area. Um, you'll see you'll see a lot of uh, red coats. You'll see a lot of blue hair. It's very colorful down there and you'll love it. Brooklyn Heights, and it's they retreat, and you know what happened? Ready for this? This is why I think I've I, and I've said this before. You may have heard me say this before, but this is why I believe Jesus is an American, and Jesus has always and will always bleed red, white, and blue. I think I think from his crucifixes, he was bleeding red, white, and blue, and he he had big he was a big hot dog. He was American, okay. He was he was an Amer American guy, and so Jesus made it be. And it isn't, and by the way, I believe Jesus is controls the weather. My Jewish friends at home may think Jews control the weather. Whatever you want to think, whomever controls the weather to you, know that they are American because there was the sickest, thickest fog, like the thickest fog you've ever seen in your life on the morning of August 27th, just right after my birthday. There was the sickest fog and it covered the retreating colonial army that was leaving from Brooklyn that George Washington it was like almost half the army that he knew he had to retreat with if it if they didn't have that thick I'm talking about that fog okay they had a thick thick Lizzo level fog okay thick girl thick thick fog you could not see through it it was it was literally thicker it was it was uh, come come thick chlamydia come thick it was so thick, and you couldn't see through that fog at all. And by the way, when I say fog, I don't mean free, open, gay. I do want you to be free, open, and gay, but I mean actual, like, legitimate, like, atmospheric fog. The British couldn't see the army retreating. So if, if there was no fog, they would have seen them, and they would have captured them and killed them all. But George Washington was able to get them across the river into Brooklyn Heights because of, really, fog. And... So they didn't have to, you know, um, uh, lose half their army because of the weather. And, oh, here's another quick fact, quick thing about uh, what, uh, just stupid. In war, you realize, like, the, the, the losers, they just make a lot of stupid mistakes. And so they fucked up because I told you, on, that was August 29th, the day of the fog. It was raining and foggy, and he ordered his men to stay silent, which is really hard when you're escaping, because I'm sure somebody farted, somebody laughed, somebody, you know, like, somebody's like, hey, are you touching my butt? Somebody definitely said something, but he had them stay silent and slowly make their way across the East River to Manhattan. When the British woke up the next morning, the Continental Army was gone. Actually, the true story is, too, they were all gone, but, like, a couple of guys stayed behind because they got drunk and were hung over the next morning, and they didn't hear, because everyone was being so silent and sneaky, they didn't hear their fellow soldiers leaving, and then they just got captured by the British. Now, I don't know if that's true, but here on Christie's, we take a stance, and that's what I'm saying. Oh, and also, I want to give a quick shout-out to the Maryland 400. These were a group of 400 men from Maryland who held off the British Army while the rest of the Army retreated. They held them off. A lot of these guys got killed, so I just want to give a shout-out to them. Shout-out to the Maryland 400. You crab-eating fucks. The Battle of Long Island, a.k.a. the Battle of Brooklyn, you hear both terms. It was a pretty decisive victory for the British. I ain't gonna lie. They beat the shit out of us. But it was a kind of a win for, for us because we could have lost everything, and instead we lost almost nothing because we were able to retreat because of the fog. Shout out Brooklyn Fog. And basically, we went all the way to Pennsylvania. 
By the way, we just kept retreating. We just went across to Jersey and we said, we're going to Pennsylvania. We are going to Pennsylvania. I need a Dutch apple pie. I need to lick an Amish person. I need to be in Pennsylvania. And they kept going and they retreated and retreated and retreated. And the British did, you know, have control of most of New York for the Revolutionary War. Not going to lie. They, they had, you know, they had our face in the ground for a little bit there. But we're New Yorkers. We overcome. We overcome everything. Okay. And all you have to remember to do is get out there, especially if you're from Brooklyn, thank that beautiful fog every time you see it because it saved your country's ass. And all you got to do if you want to feel happy, healthy each day, all you have to do is put on your Nikes and drink Bud Light and you have no problems because you're doing the right thing, supporting trans rights as George Washington would have. And that's what the Battle of Brooklyn was about. So I want to shout out George Washington for being a badass leader. Georgie W., you're so badass. You're so fucking cool. Um, I'm sorry you're dead now. We may have lost, you know, the greatest land in the world for a brief second to the Brits, okay? And let me tell you something. We didn't lose it to the Brits for long, and we're not going to lose it to the Chinese for long. It, take it. They're winning right now, but we're going to get it back, just like we got it back after the Battle of Brooklyn because the boys wound up winning the war, okay? So fuck you, 1700s Britain, and fuck you, 2035 China. We're going to win. Remember, yesterday... Was history.